Now your task list within Outlook also has some great opportunities for you to get organized and sort of prioritize the things that you need to do. One of the big dangers with task lists, I think, is when you get a, a, just a very long list and you begin to lose track of when stuff is supposed to be done, it can almost become counterproductive. So one of the things that I try to do is consolidate tasks. So here under clients, I might have a client follow-up list task, which is sort of a master task that I want to use all the time to keep a running list of all the stuff I've got to follow up with on clients. That way, I just have one place to go. They're not sort of spread out amongst all the other tasks, and that way I can prioritize them. For example, if I number this task one clients and hit save and close, look what happens. It pops to the top of whatever list it's on. Now, if, um, if, I, if this was more important and I labeled it zero, watch what happens. See how it pops right up to the top of that list. So you can create some client uh, summary type lists or a summary type tasks like this client task and, and name them in a certain way and they'll be prioritized. Now, of course, you can also categorize things uh, and using the same categories that you're using with an email. So maybe this is um, a team related event. You can uncheck admin and make this a team, or this could be urgent. You know, you could label urgent and important and sort of sort on those particular tasks. I'd also like to show you that when you create a new task, you can do something that's kind of neat. You can actually assign a task to another person or even a team. If you assign it to just one person, you can specify a start date and a stop date when you want to get it done. And when they're done with that task, they'll have a little uh, complete button. You can see that complete button right in here. When they click mark as complete, you'll automatically be notified that that task is, is uh, completed. So you don't have to call up and bother that person or anything like that at all. Another thing that I wanted to mention is if you have repetitive, repetitive tasks that you assign to someone, let's say complete business plan is a repetitive task, you could put step one in here, you know, do this, step two, you're really laying it out so they can get this task done in quick fashion so that they can, uh, you know, help you get meet, meet a deadline or something like that. Let's say you've, you've scoped out these three steps, right? You hit save and close. Well, you may want to, for this task, um, create a secondary version of it. If you, you say to yourself, well, I'm going to have to do this again in, in two months, you can, whoops, you can highlight the task, hit control C, control V, make a copy of it, and then you could call this, oh, let's call this ZZ complete business plan template. So, whoops. so now you have a template, <laughs> sorry, now you have a template and the next time you need to have this task done, you could even put an attachment in there, whatever it takes to get that task done, then you just sort of highlight that, hit control C, control V, open it up, just rename it, maybe take the ZZ out, kind of rename it, uh, and then you've got your three steps embedded in there for the next person to do that task. So just a couple quick things about tasks, I think that will help you uh, get control and get more done.